Hi everybody, I'm here with Zach Ortiz, and we're here to play one of his favorite games. And before we do, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm Zach, I've known John for about uh, seven years, probably. I don't know, I, I'm i like Morgan Freeman, clearly I've got troubles with the man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just you know, love fighting games, not the best at them, but still, still love them. Not a scrub. <laughs> and I and I know you've done other shows, right? On YouTube? Uh yeah. Um not all the time, but I've done some guest spots here and there for my for another friend's uh, YouTube channel. You check them out at uh, uh youtube.com slash gamerpie LP channel. You know, help a brother out support them. So yeah, check out Gamer Pie if you like, you know, LPs and, and, and all that junk. <laughs> okay, and what game did you bring us today? So I brought you was probably my favorite fighting game of all time. The game that got me into just splooging all over S and K, which is the King of Fighters ninety eight. Yeah. We're playing the uh, we're playing the, the updated version, King of Fighters ninety eight UM or all ten match. Technical difficulties, we couldn't get it working on PC. It's alright, but we're playing it on PlayStation 2. One of the, one it's of the... fine. Be old school. Be hardcore like us. Screw, <laughs> screw the PC. Use a PS2. <laughs> and, but don't worry. The, P, the, the PC one is really cool too. You yeah, can also yeah. purchase that at the Steam store. But you also can purchase this game on Xbox Live still, I think. Yeah, but don't, uh, don't do that. Xbox, or you could, or you just, could just... Xbox Live is dead. Just get a PS2. <laughs> Yeah, you can also find this game on online or at shops if you can find it. It's a really good, it's a really good game. Yeah. So the the, the deal with uh, alternate matches, uh, it's like the director's cut of ninety eight. Ninety eight was a dream match. Yeah. This kind of adds all. King of Fires has always like been split up into different story arcs, and the original ninety eight had like missing some characters from the first story arc, which is the Orochi saga. Yeah. So this one adds in everyone and makes a, a, a lot of new tweaks and new stages. And one of the cool bonuses about the PS2 version that the Steam one doesn't have is that you can select the uh, arranged soundtrack. Oh, cool. The only you could do that on Steam is if you replace the sound files. And that's where you come in with more modding issues and all that. Yeah. Okay. But we are going to get started on it and Zach does have a lot more to say, especially each character in here is very different than any most fighters out there. So. Yeah. Part of the reason why I really love King of Fighters is I felt the games are more fun, characters are way more interesting, never could get into vanilla Ryu, and also I think just just, just bias because of my Mexican DNA. So. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, cause a lot of people are aware, aware that in Mexico, a lot of most cabinets are bought are Neo Geo cabinets because they're cheap because they can hold four games in one, in some cases five. So you think you only need like one peso to play it too, right? Well, yeah, one peso, I believe, is like maybe like 50 cents now, or a dollar. But but the thing was, it's um, it was one of the cheaper cabinets, and, and most areas in South California have them too. And I see most people playing them because, you know, it's a fun game, it's really eager out there. If they're not playing King of Fighters, they're playing Metal Slug. What are those oh, two? Oh, yeah. And those two are very iconic and, and basically in our community in gaming. But besides all that, ghetto laundry mats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he laundry mats and all that. But, but I, but I'm not a big King of Fire player because I never really could get the hang of it because it's all strict timing. It, it's it's a little uh, in some aspects it's kind of it's a little stiff. Uh, not so much now, but yeah, like timing inputs especially. Like if you're going to see a character like Keith Howard with his pretzel motions. Oh good. yeah, when we say pretzel motions for people who don't play fighting. It's when you have to do an actual infinity symbol on a stick or your thumb on a D-pad. You gotta make a pretzel motion with the freaking stick. Which I'm hoping now with King of Fighters 14, their goal is to like bring in newcomers and they're adding the auto yeah. combos. I'm hoping, not necessarily simplify, but maybe, maybe make some of the commands a little easier. Yeah, and that's for, you know, for more casual players who don't really play fighting games. And Trust me, if, if you're a casual player and you play this game, you'll love it because of the story. This thing actually has a really good well story throughout the years. And that they actually pay attention to, not like Capcom, where it's like a character's dead. No, wait, no, he's alive. Yeah, but it's all, it's all that depends who's writing and who's programming and everything. But 
don't get me wrong, like I still like other games, other fighting games, but this is like one of the top notch on story and gameplay side by side. Yeah. From the from some of the others. And let's get to it. All right. We're on the character select screen, and I notice there's like different modes. Uh, these are your you get to choose from uh, three different uh, meters. In the original version, you only had advance and extra. Ultimate is the new one. But uh, we're just going to stick with Advance, because if, uh, if anyone's familiar with playing uh, Capcom vs. SNK 2, Advance is the end group. That's like your standard one. So. And it's just like in, in some of the fires, like they have one, two, and three, and each level does a move, a special, right? With a right. The, the thing of King of Fighters is this game is team combat based, where you have, you know, select like three guys, and every time a guy goes down, you go for another, uh, you select another one. Or no one comes into play. Uh, if your teammate goes down, you would, uh, to compensate, you get another uh, level meter added. Oh, okay. So your meter can go up to five instead of three. Because you're you're basically dragging the team, right? Yeah. And the way the team system works, it's not a tag team, right? It's a turn-based team. Yeah. It, uh, like I said, like uh, if your teammate goes down, the next round your other guy takes his place. Um, and th this is something that uh, I, I was. When when uh, when King of Fighters uh once it went to King of Fighters two thousand three, that's when they uh that's when they started doing tag things. Uh, and let's get more about your your influence of this game, like your like how did you know about it and everything. Uh, like as as I said earlier, ghetto laundromats. Okay. Found this game at a laundromat with uh it, I think it had KOF ninety eight and ninety six. So. Oh wow. So I got to play that too. That was like my first exposure to the boss team. You can do any random state. Oh yeah, do the boss state in 96. I think I think Metal I think uh, Metal Slug X and Samurai Shodown 4 were on it too. So uh, I just fell in love with it because I always just thought the characters were way cooler and the presentation was was better. And you know, I played ended up playing Street Fighter Alpha later. And you know, I, I prefer Alpha over uh other Street Fighters, but King of Fighters has always been the series for me. And speaking of Street Fighter, how, in the game accounts of this game, besides you know the combo being straight and all, what makes it stand out from Street Fighter? So Capcom, you know, does the standard six buttons. King of Fighters has always been four buttons because you know the Neo Geo has always had like four buttons A, B, C, D. And I'm, to be honest, I've always kind of just preferred the four button layout over the six. Six gets too kind of complicated. It's like I don't have extra digits, you know. Yeah. It's not a mutant. And besides that, um, you, you are right. There are really good characters. Like, tell me more about your character, the one you picked so far. So Ralph is from uh, an old uh, '80s running gun arcade game called Akari Warriors. If anyone watches any video game nerd, they've probably seen the video. That that game does not age well, but uh. Yeah, the, the, part of the whole thing with King of Fighters is that it started out as just a big crossover with a lot of SNK's other games. It was like, you know, two of their big fighting game franchises, uh, Fatal Fury, Art of Fighting, they added like two obscure arcade games, which were it, it's a mix like Ikari Warriors and, uh, and Psycho Soldier. I think in earlier development they wanted to add like guys like Samurai Showdown and World Heroes, but... It started out as a crossover with like original character Stone in. Okay. And then, you know, it just became its own series. Like on equal or even greater than Fatal Fury and stuff like that. Uh brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing about King of Fighters, how to stand it out, just uh here, let's just screw around the movie. You could you could run. You got uh, you got dodges. You got like short and long hops. And there's even a move that you could avoid attacks. Well, uh, are they like the light and trunk ones, right? Uh, light punch and light kick are uh, are your dodge. Okay. Pretty much, you do a dodge roll, and I think. Uh, uh, lights, left or right, you'll either dodge, you're, you're either to roll left or right. Okay. And yeah, you got like um, short hops, long long jumps. So a lot more movement options, which I, I just generally like more. 
So uh, another new trick, you highlight, you hold select on certain characters, you'll get like an alternate version of that character, it's like a different moves, move set. Because like some of these, like, you know, some of these characters are from like Fatal Fury and uh, so these characters from like Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting, so they'll have like their older move sets from like Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting and whatnot. And um, besides that, um, because I know you have a lot of history with this game, like you have not just the game but the characters and everything. Tell us more about it, like get into detail of like why you like the game and so franchise so far, or anything SNK. <laughs> just SNK, just like I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't hate Capcom. Well, maybe nowadays, but, I mean, who doesn't? Don't worry, this video's gonna be dating, we're gonna look back on this. <laughs> no, uh, I, they'll probably be dead by the time this video comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't have any more technical issues with it. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I've always just liked the characters more. They just seem just more relatable, just more likable. Like I said, Ryu has been, like, probably one of the most vanilla protagonists ever. Yeah. Um, and you know, just and King of Fires was like a gateway to other SNK games because it's like, oh, I didn't know Terry came from another series. So, so then you know that's how I discovered stuff like Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting and other series like Samurai Showdown. And, you know, um, cult stuff like Last Blade and Mark of the Wolves. And you know, of course, who doesn't know Metal Slug? I don't think there's a person that doesn't even know what Metal Slug is. But just in case that there is, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of hardcore games for our casual ones. Metal Slug is a, a shooter game. Like, oh, it's a running gun. Like it's if, a running gun. If you ever played Contra on the NES, it's kind of like that. But more hyped up, right? Because of the, the graphics and the. Oh, it's got some of the best bright art. But you can play that. Uh, you can play it on. Uh, I like my moonwalk I got. <laughs> Uh, you could, you could, uh, you can get the vehicles and stuff in that one. King of Fires is off to have really great music. And, besides that, like, tell us, tell us a little bit more about, you know, like I said, SNK, I know you know the whole history behind them. Isn't SNK had, like, members from other game companies that put yeah. over? Yeah, so, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the dumbest complaints I've ever heard about being a bar is like, Ooh, it's just a Street Fighter ripoff. I'm like, no, jack off. It's, it was made by ex-Capcom people, and it's kind of its own entity. Yeah. You might think it's a Street Fighter ripoff, but it's totally not. It's its own thing. There might be some characters that kind of take influences, but again, ex-Capcom guys made Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting. So there's a reason why Rio plays kind of like Ryu. And plus they don't have a, they don't have like a drunken lobotomized chip chimpanzee working for them like Street Fighter does. You ever seen uh, Mexican players? They play on. A the cross hand. Yes, I've seen that. I, that's inhuman. I can't do I that. I think it's because there is some cabinets in Mexico. I've seen some that they flip it around. And when when some of them come over to the US, like I do have a cousin from Mexico, he, he looks at my arcade and goes, "What's wrong with your stick?" And I'm like, "There's nothing wrong with my stick." I'm like, "Oh yeah, for us it's the other way around." And I'm like, "Oh." So. You know, Seth Killian. From, uh, who used to work at Capcom plays that. He plays yeah. cross stick style, which is why when they did the the Seth Killing character dive kick. Just to let you, just to let our common viewers know, Seth Killing is a. a well, I just said he used yeah. to work at Capcom. Oh, Capcom, yeah. But he's also one of the big names in fighting game community because he's done other projects with other people. And and he mentioned a game called Dive Kick. And Dive Kick is a really fun game to play because it's a two budding game. But it, goes back to basics of fighting games, you know, reading your opponent and zoning them out. Right, which I'd rather have Dive Kick in Evo than Marvel again. Yeah. But uh, there's a Seth Kelly character like that. Uh, that's ba there's a character based off of Seth Kelly in the game, and he fights across him, so. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> this And. 
and before we keep on playing and playing and, you know, non-stop like we're doing, I know we're having a little bit of gas conversation, but it's very hard because this game does have, it's overflow with a lot of stuff, especially you pick the right game for it, because each character can, you could, I could pick a character and he'll know a lot about just one character, and this game is overflow with that. Because like I said, 98 was the gateway to me finding out more about Essen, a bunch of Neo Geo games, and then it's how I found, like, the, the joy of emulation, which, yeah. I know that might be taboo for some people. Oh, it's illegal, but... It's, it's illegal in a sense if you're going to make money off of it, that's fine. But if you don't have an access to an arcade or a game... I'm okay, not going to spend, like, but, $100 and quarters just to play Bubble Slug. And to be fair, we do end up buying... Like, I don't implement on emulation, like, I kind of think that's it. But if you are going to buy the game later on, it's fine. Yeah, no, if, we, if you got a problem with me emulating, you send all your hate mail to Michaels underscore Zachary at Yahoo.com. <laughs> leave, leave John out of it. <laughs> because I got nothing against emulation, because to be fair, I do emulate some games, but I do buy them when I have the money, and I am one of those guys. Like, to be honest, I'm one of those guys who actually will buy five copies of the same game <laughs> from different ports. <laughs> like, I'll give you a good example. Comic Zone. I got it on Sega Genesis. I got it on PlayStation 2 with the Sonic Mega Collection. I got it for the PS3 on their store. I got it on my Xbox 360 on the store. And I also have it on Steam. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot say I do not support me. But. Comic Zone is a badass game, though. It is. And I'll get into that someday. But yeah. Right now, it's. um. Let's this, this, this talk about more about this, this do this do the segment I want to do because there's a lot of characters. Oh, yeah. I will pick a character, not the team, you don't have to name the team, but every time I use the first character, you tell me a little bit about it. Let's go with the Star protagonist in the King of Fighters series, and it's Tangling Keel. Right. Keel Kazanagi, what's his deal? Yeah, and Keel's, you know, the, the, the main poster boy for King of Fighters. Been there since, the, since its uh, in debut in KOF 94. And even then, when like, you know, like when they do a new saga and he's not the protagonist, he's still there. And so he's he's just always been like just cooler than Ryu, but you know, kind of starts out kind of like your uh, a bit a, a bit of like your anime a uh, high school delinquent kind of archetype. Yeah. And then just kind of uh, evolve because unlike Ryu, he's actually changed appearance and move sets with like each saga. Yeah. And, and then when Capcom decides to change Ryu, it's like, well, that's a DLC offer. That's not his default. Mm -hmm. and, and then this, besides that, and now let's talk about two, two of his other team. Let's get to... Betty Baru. It's kind of based on a character from a manga, an anime called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I don't plug that shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I would not have done that if you weren't wearing that shirt. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I'm a big JoJo fan, so I had to get to Bay at some point. But uh, and so you know, Keo's got flame powers. Benny Maru's got lightning. Benny Maru, I don't know. Say say what you will. People say, oh, he's kind of gay looking. Like it's it's, Japan, the, it's, it's the, the it's boy. boy. It is, and the thing is, he's, isn't he? All up in the women though, like he always hits on. Oh yeah, he, 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 he drowned in the pussy. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There, I saved myself. I know you, you don't want me swearing. But like I say, we ended out with coins and all that. But and let's get to his third man. Uh, Daimon and Goro Daimon is like big judo guy, earth powers, and it looks like a uh, dude looks like Brock from Pokemon, where his eyes are always closed. Yeah. And it's so weird because I don't know if you saw the, the when they did the trailer for the Japan team in uh, King of Fighters 14, and he opens his eyes during his level three, and that's yeah. like if Brock opened his eyes. That's yeah. so weird. Then like only for his big super movie opens his eyes. And on top of that, does he isn't he a family man? Doesn't he have a kid? Yeah, which is cool. Like that. I mean, other than Guile, who, who else is a family man in Street Fighter? Yeah, and it's cool because his son does show up once in a while on the... Oh, yeah, he shows up in his little intros in, in some games with the with little judo key on. <laughs> okay, let me pick the team you just described. Yeah, the, the Japan team. The Japan team. It wasn't there in, in the earlier King of Fire games. One of the teams were, like, fixed. You couldn't select your own characters, and each member was, like, a wrong an, um, analogy for them. Like, uh, wrong... Uh, King of Fighters 94 started, yeah, you, you had like fixed teams. You couldn't like select your own. 
could make your own guys until 95 gave you that option. But, uh, but with, uh, yeah, it was weird. Like, Japan team was the right nationality. Team Korea was the right nationality. Uh, USA was all American guys. But then, like, you get the weird stuff. Like, Team Italy was just the dudes from Fatal Fury. Like, why? Because Andy Skate from Fatal Fury 2 was in Italy. The, this pizza pasta force. <laughs> team Mexico is the art of fighting, fighting team. And I heard, like, from a friend, like, that's because they own a dojo in Mexico. None of them are really Mexican, though. And that's why I was so happy that now with King of Fire's poor team, you get a proper Team Mexico. And, you know, there's a guy proud of his heritage and a big King of Fire fan. That makes me really happy. And that's, and that's cool. And it's, and it's all Luchadors. <laughs> it's all if you're a wrestling fan, there you go. If you're a wrestling fan of Luchadors, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's all Luchadors. And they're they're going to be fighting in Dara and Plato's temple. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to understand that, that reference, go watch Luchadors. Why aren't you watching Luchadors? <laughs> Um, and then let's get some more character descriptions, like the character you're playing as, Bill, Billy. Yeah, Billy Kane, he was like a, he basically be like, Fatal Fury 1, he's a villain character, fights with like a pole, with a pole, but it's one of those weird like, poles that kind of split. It's a, it's a triple chunk. Right, switch to those, like a, yeah, like a, that's, the, that's, 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 that's like a gun chunk, yeah. yeah. triple chunk, that's a real weapon. And when they when they did like a there was like a 3D King of Fighters they did Maximum Impact and when they did Maximum Impact 2 which was released in the US as King of Fighters 2006, Billy is so cheap because if anyone's ever played Soul Calibur which is a 3D weapons based fighter, there's a character that fights with the staff and you know he'll do a cheap move where he'll swing that stuff like crazy. Billy in 3D King of Fighters was so just disgusting. Like if he was like Ford heavy heavy punch, and it'll just do like this just disgustingly cheap yeah, multi hit swing. It, it'll take a lot of damage off the opponent and, and sometimes to death. And I, oh, I I just yeah, so I, I'm glad like when we get Billy in 14, it's like a standard 2D Billy. Yeah. And let's get to Jodadashi. Sorry for telling you the last name. Well, I uh, really know Joe... about the character a lot too. Well, yeah, because the Fatal Fury animes are awesome. <laughs> hey, it's a uh, yeah, Joe's a kick, uh, like a Muay Thai style kickboxer. He's been like a major Fatal Fury character since day one. So yeah, it's, it's kind of fitting that the, the Fatal Fury team is like the big three of Fatal Fury Terry, Andy, and Joe. And not only that, Joe's like boy, probably one of my favorite anime voice actors. Has like a distinct, like, just crazy hot blooded voice. I was a little, actually a little disappointed they changed his voice after 14. I only think I'm so used to like playing this game with like my uh, my fighting game, uh, Ori controller on Steam, that I transition back to like a stiffer PS2 controller. It's kind of hard, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm calling con Controller Johns. <laughs> Controller Johns. Controller Johns is a fighting game term. I feel bad for the guy. There's this guy in the Smash tournament. The Smash Brothers tournament. The story goes that he started making excuses about why he was losing, that there was like issues with this controller. Yeah. So people call it Johns. Yeah, it's kind of bad on me because my name is John, so it's like... We're not talking about you, but I feel bad for the guy <laughs> that they named it after because I don't know if he's got, like, he's not, like, too ashamed to show up at tournaments now. No, he does show up at tournaments, but he doesn't play. He only watches... Well, them. yeah, because they humiliated the poor guy. <laughs> uh, controller Johns. <laughs> but let's, let's give more back to the favorite <laughs> king. There has been so many of... King of Fighter games out there, it's like... Oh, yeah, no, it's... Right well, there. they're at the 14th of the mainline entries. And there's been so many sub lines, there have been, like... Yeah, the 3D ones on I mentioned. Three, there's three some, and everything. There's been some good ones on the Game Boy Advance, which... Game Boy Advance would have, like, some exclusive characters on which we come back. Yeah. And there is oh, some, and there sorry. is some characters, too, that I kind of want them to bring in, but... Well, they, the entire USA team 
haven't been in a game since 98. Yeah. The USA Sports There is one character it'll be great to have, but a lot of people will not consider it good idea right now. Miss X. I, I want Miss X. Let's talk about Miss X in this scene. There's, so, there's a reason why we're bringing this up. Yeah. But there's a reason why I'm highlighting this character. Yeah, Yori Nagami is like, you know, he's Kyo's big rival. He's the other big poster character and for before we get, Fighters. Before we get to Miss X, let's talk about more about Yori that like you're doing right now. But why is he Kyo's rival? I, I don't want to like delve too much into the backstory because there's this whole like thing with like a family bloodline and ancient Japanese demons and all that yeah. stuff. But put in the basics. Iori Ethan hates Kyo, hates his guts, wants him dead, kind of stalks him weirdly like Sagat did with Ryu. But in with, with, with Yori's case, wasn't it just straight out, he just walked up to him and just said, I hate you, that's it? Yeah, I think so, but... It, it, was, it was like, yeah, there's a... It's not as emo as you think, as I'm making emo, it sound, not but... Not emo, but I mean, like, there is that backstory behind it, but the first time people realize, like, he hates him for the sake of hating him. No yeah. reason in the beginning. No, I think there's also like the, the whole stuff with the bloodline. Yeah, but like, like I, I said, said go, the, go to an SK wiki. And like I said, in the beginning there was no draw on story yet. It's just in the beginning it was just like, I hate you, let's be rivals. Well yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he was on the rival team because he had like Billy and AG from Ar Billy from Bill Fury and AG from Art of Fire, yeah. all the rival characters. But uh <laughs> they for the SK had their own little handheld, the Neo Geo Pocket. There's the pocket color. They did like a game called SK Gal Spider. It's like a cute little kind of like chibi crossover game of like female SK characters. Yeah. And the and the story of that game is like you have to find like this like pretty much like the, the Dragon Balls. You found this thing like called the K Talisman or whatever. It would grant your wishes and all that junk. Yeah. And the final boss was a chick named Miss X wearing like a female delinquent uniform with a mask and long skirt. Yeah. It's just Yori and Drag, <laughs> and it's a non-canon, you know, joke game. Yeah. But it's still Yori and Drag. It's like I'm going to get this to grant my wish, and it's like people are like, "Isn't that you? You got me?" Like, no. <laughs> He's like, so we're denying it in the pictures and everything. He makes a cameo in um, SNK versus Capcom Chaos. Yeah. Because Dimitri has that move that turns like guys into women and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, and when he does it on the Yori, he tri um, no, I think he does it when he does it on the Orochi Yori, I think he turns him into the Miss X. Yes, yeah, it does. Which is awesome. I, they're making him for Mugen. That is awesome. <laughs> and to me, just to let you know, Dimitri's from another fighting game called Dog Stones. And we'll get into that soon, because I know that's one of his favorites and one of mine. Which and Capcom will never, never bring back. Yeah, it never gets Despite so what they tell you, despite what, you know, they're. Idiot Street Fighter producer Ono tells you they'll never bring it back. No. It's dead. It is dead. It's dead. <laughs> but it's cool. Like it, man, I wish we have so much time for this. Like to really talk about it. We could play a few more matches and talk along the way. But I'm telling you, like like you were playing it when you were young. You, this is a great way to introduce some King of Fights because it has everybody from all the years. Each era have a backstory, and it introduces the Orochi saga that's based on the beginning before. Yeah, the this game. is the first. The, the two best ones I could recommend, especially because they're both on... Actually, you can even get the triple path on Steam. Yeah. You get a um, 98 alternate match, 2002 unlimited match, which is... Uh, that's the NES saga. And that, that was the next big one. So you get that on Steam. You get King of Fighters 13, which was like the last entry in their ass saga. That one's just all kind of more old school like 98 but it's all done with like really beautiful sprite work and then if you could track it down from ps2 look for the king of fighters 11 because that one's really good and that one it's like tag team actual tagging out base yeah. we got a cameo for my fat ass i don't think he's, i don't think he's on cam we could make him on cam oh he, he just, just called up he, he just wants to say hi he just wants to say hi we'll put him back so so in king of fighters it's a great series it's a great it's a great day, <laughs> and it's one of those games. It's like you can fall in love with the whole story and the saga itself just by the characters alone. Yeah. You don't even have to play. I, I realize it's it, it is kind of hard for some people to get in because of the gameplay. Yeah, it is a bit more advanced than just you know. Yeah, simple stuff like you see in most fighting games. 
today or back then. But if you play Street Fighter, you can kind of yeah. you, you can kind of ease your way into it. It's not like Mortal Kombat with like it's weird. Yeah, direct inputs, like no quarter circle, no. Yeah. Combat. But this was a, this was a really cool game. I I enjoyed playing it with him, and I'm really glad that he could give us more history about it and more of why he likes it. And it's really cool because you never see a lot of uh, dedication for certain games like this. And this is one of the richest environment ones out there. We, sh we should have played this on Secret of the Mind. We should have. A... We, we should have done this on Secret of the Mind. Yeah, it would have been great. Viva but... Arriba La Raza, <laughs> LAX Conan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to explain that one. No, we'll, we'll let but you But for those who get it, you're awesome. <laughs> we'll let you figure that out. <laughs> but thanks again, man. Um, I hope you I hope you come back next time with another favorite game and we'll talk about it some more and yeah, play a few more matches. Hopefully we'll uh, we'll play probably one of my favorite Capcom fighting games. Oh, let's not tell them. Let's see. No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll let you we'll, guess. We'll, we'll let you we'll let you give you a hint. If you're an anime fan, you'll love it. Yeah. Thanks again, man. I hope to see you again soon and peace out. <laughs> Thanks for watching my episode of Story Mode and I'll put the link in the description of where to buy it, his description of his cameos, and any other information. And right. if you'd like to be a member, like to actually show up at one of my episodes, you can send me a tweet or a Facebook message and we'll get in contact. Thank you right. and have a nice day. Take care.